Welcome back to the Afternoon Sports Drive here on the Triple Play Sports Radio Network. Patrick Wheeler and Jason Elmquist joining me now. And joining us is Chris Dorado all the way from Florida. He's been on the show here a few times. We've had plenty of NASCAR news going on during during everything else. Chris, how's Florida treating you? Well, it's very hot down here. So, uh, But uh, the unfortunate part of... Uh, being down here right now is that the uh, coronavirus cases are rising by the day mm-hmm. so uh, hopefully we can get a handle on that sooner than later and uh, start knocking them down again yeah it was uh you know they, they did a pretty good job overall in terms of, of everything that they were uh, governing with the coronavirus and all that up to this point now, obviously we're going to have more cases with with uh, the restrictions eased and things like that but uh uh, we can also agree that it's uh, been pretty toasty over here in Stillwater as well. This this whole start of the summer, it has been nuts. Uh, NASCAR, though, we have had more NASCAR news uh, in, in the last few, I guess, couple of months, and we have in a long time now. Now, NASCAR, I've given them credit because they were one of those first sto- sports that aggressively tried to make a comeback when it came to to the coronavirus pandemic and everything so far we'll get into more about everything else in a minute but so far have you think they've done a good job with with getting races back on the air it's been uh, actually uh, nothing short of a miracle frankly i mean you know there, there, there are a lot of moving parts no pun intended uh with with uh, getting these races staged and uh, first and foremost scheduled and then staged uh, so for them to do what they've done so far has been, uh, uh, you know, impressive. And, I, you know, I think more sports should be able to follow uh, what they're trying to accomplish in terms of keeping their their teams and uh, and drivers and then the players and some of the other sports cases safe. I think that there's a, there's a template that uh, some of these other sports can follow. I haven't seen much of, of like, the precautions that they're taking, you know, whether it's uh, constant testing, quarantining if you come down positive. Like, what what's kind of been uh, their game plan of just trying to identify and make sure that there's not a spread within, especially within the garages themselves? I, I, I know for a fact that everybody has to have their temperature taken prior to uh, entering the facility so that, that right away uh, tells you a little bit of what's going on uh, with somebody's health. So, uh, and of course, there's some. I think there are some tests that are taken uh, prior to coming to a, to the track. So, uh, they're, they're, they aggressively make sure that their participants and their and all the staff that has to has to uh, enter the facility, uh, they're that they're healthy and then of course not spreading the virus at the same time if they're if they're showing some symptoms. Chris Dorado joining us here on the Afternoon Sports Drive. Been long involved with, with auto racing. Uh, Chris, what was your initial response to NASCAR saying they are banning the Confederate flag? I mean, you know, it has a uh, you know, great offense to, to many, many people, but at the same time it was also like one of those, those symbols of NASCAR too. So what did you think of that? Well, I thought it was a, a very wise and, uh, and, and terrific move on their part. Uh, probably long overdue, frankly. And, uh, of course, the primary mover and shaker behind that was uh, Bubba Wallace, who we, uh, we all uh, felt bad for yesterday prior to the uh, race at Talladega. Everybody saw, heard about the, that despicable uh, situation that occurred in his garage stall with the, uh, with the noose hanging there and, uh, and uh, the show of support from the, all the competitors and the team members and his uh, team owner yesterday, Richard Petty, uh, that was uh, just a moving moment. So I think uh, NASCAR is uh, being very, very wise in what they're doing. And uh, uh, like I said, it's probably long overdue. They should have uh, put their foot down a long time ago, Frank. Well, you brought up the uh, Sunday's incident with the noose, and and obviously I've seen far far too many people uh, of you know basically saying that it was planted by Bubba or somebody in his in his garage, and I, I guess I've I, I know for a fact that the drivers aren't allowed in the garage during rain day, delays and whatnot. In a normal circumstance, and again, it may be even you know more strenuous right now because of the pandemic. But during a, a rain delay, I mean, who's actually allowed access to the garages uh, for especially when it's such a long rain delay as they had Sunday well I, I can only uh, attest to the fact that when I was traveling the circuit 
uh, you know, in the NASCAR garage area, in, in, in the best of times, is a completely secure area. Uh, when, when practices and qualifying are over on a given Saturday, for example, all the teams are required to leave the garage area. So it, has become, it becomes a lockdown uh, situation. So uh, it, it's interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see the, how the invest, investigation unfolds. I guess the FBI is involved, yeah. from what I from what I've read. And uh, you know, it, 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 like you said, it's it's not the easiest place to gain access to uh, in the best of times, no less when there's a pandemic. And in, in a rain delay scenario, many many of the team members retreat to uh, you know to cover. Obviously, and uh, certainly in the driver's case, if they have their motorhomes that they re- they go back to. So, uh, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all unfolds. But, you know, there, there's a it, during this time, there's a select number of people that have access to the garage area. So, I'm sure they'll be able to identify what took place. Yeah, yeah, well, Chris. With that being the case, wouldn't and also maybe you can speak to this. What type of surveillance maybe does does goes on with all those garages and everything? I, I feel like that's kind of what we had, I had talked about with the caller earlier. My only skepticism from the whole thing, not saying Bubba Wallace is, is lying or anything like that, but, but where would the maybe like video evidence, photo evidence, wouldn't something come up from that? Maybe NASCAR hasn't just hasn't released it yet. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, you know, there could be video evidence. I'm not sure, uh, but you know, I know that again. In these garage areas, there's there's security, uh, have, you know, uh, roaming the grounds at all times, uh, whether it be overnight or or even during the uh, during the times when there's uh, practices. And or in this case, they didn't have any practice. But when the when the when the teams are congregated on at the venue, there's security. So they're going to be able to uh, do a lot of uh, interviews with people and and uh, you know if there is security uh, camera footage somewhere which I, I'm confident there probably is I mean many of these tracks now some of them uh, while they're aged uh, they have the, the newest and greatest technology to to uh, for for uh, you know footage so I would think that they'll be able to look at that and identify what took place well and, and with that I mean it, it sounds like no matter who did it, it had to have been someone uh, with, that would, would be allowed access, essentially. So it has to be someone truly within NASCAR, not a you know the possibility of a media person or a or a fan or whatever, because obviously fans weren't even allowed in the the, the uh, inside the tracks. So, I mean, uh, the, when when NASCAR comes out and says you know whoever it is will does not have a place in NASCAR, it's they're they're making it obvious that they feel that it is likely someone with with ties, whether it's you know uh, with, within a team or. Or someone who works for the track that they believe that someone who has actual ties to NASCAR is probably like the uh, culprit, right? Well, and, and again, you know, the fact that there aren't any fans roaming the grounds, you know, in the, and again, the best of times, the the fans had, do have access, or a select group of fans have right. access to to the garage area. But in this case, it's just the internal folks, shall we say? So, uh, and it and it would include. Uh, you bring up a valid point. It's not only the teams and 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 folks that are working for the teams uh, and, and management, but it's also the track personnel that have that are assigned to the garage area. So they're going to have to look at uh, that group of folks as well. Chris Dorado joining us here on the afternoon sports drive. What'd you think about that finish last yesterday? I guess it was actually last night with uh, when it all came down to a finish. But what'd you think of that? Well, you're, you're asking the wrong person because I was rooting for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. <laughs> perfectly honest with you. He's actually a uh, – his, his crew chief, Brian Patty, is a, uh, a friend of my uh, in-laws, and uh, he grew up with my brother-in-law uh, in, on the west coast of, of Florida. So, uh, so you know, my, my, uh, my I was a little partial to uh, Ricky Stenhouse and the 47 car winning. But, what, but that's the kind of racing you want to see, guys. I mean – some of these races, quite frankly, can be rather boring. Uh, one of them's coming up here on the July 4th weekend uh, in Indianapolis, and and actually Pocono at times can be a little boring, although they will beat Bang there a little bit. But but Talladega traditionally has that that kind of racing, and and it was it was refreshing to see, and and uh, you know I'm sure that opened up with some eyes to to some racing fans that may not have been wanting to tune in yesterday, but. Uh, but, you know, the, the plate racing, as they call it, is always exciting, whether it's at Daytona or Talladega. 
What, what were your feelings uh, pre-race when you saw everything, that, you know, the, the drivers and the, the, the crews coming together behind Bubba Wallace? Obviously, uh, Richard Petty making an appearance at, at the, the race for the first time during the pandemic as well. It was, again, I think I mentioned it, it's a, it was a moving moment. I mean, to see, to see that kind of support for Bubba was, was terrific. Uh, I think it was uh, definitely handled real, uh, by Fox Sports. Uh, I thought that was that was a really touching moment there, and uh, you know the fact that you could see Bubba break down emotionally like he did, uh, you know, it brought a tear to tear to your eye as a fan. So uh, you know he's he's had to endure a lot over the last couple of weeks, and and uh, to his credit, he's capably handling it and representing his sport in, in the best manner possible. Well, and it feels like NASCAR's obviously behind him because it's also, you know, while while obviously the diehard long-term fans, maybe some of them have been disgruntled by it. It's also opening up the doors to a, a new fan base. I mean, you 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 know, I remember seeing, um, uh, I think it was Alvin Kamara, uh, the running back for the Saints, went to the first race. Uh, I, I know in the post race uh, last night, they had uh, people saying that they came for all the way from Atlanta just to watch Bubba Wallace race. I mean, the well while people while some people in the sport fans are wanting to keep um, keep the rebel flag and all this stuff, it also is allowing the sport to almost grow to a to a new niche of, of fans. And that's the idea that Bubba's been trying to put forth here in all his remarks that, you know, this this is an all-inclusive sport. Uh, no matter what race you are, no matter what gender you are, they welcome every fan. So, and, and that's and that's the idea behind NASCAR and what they what they do. They're an all-American sport, and and they like to uh, they don't exclude anybody. So uh, I think, uh, and it's probably true that this is. This has brought in a, a different base of fans, and and I, and and I think you're going to win the, when the fans do congregate in the stands in mass again, which will be soon, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit. But uh, I think you're going to you're going to see an expansion of uh, of the demographics. Well, and, and 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 that's the thing I think that's made NASCAR so great over the years is there was always somebody like that who is a little bit different than the you know the the, the southern drivers and whatnot. I, I go back to a guy like uh, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. They kind of uh, elevated the interest in the sport because they were the, the California kids and stuff like that, and it started growing that way as well. So I mean that that's been the great thing about the sport is is you get a, the right driver along, and they have been uh, uh, able to create a way to expand the sport beyond just the you know it's kind of its southern roots and that's true and jeff gordon uh pretty much uh brought nascar to, to madison avenue if you will yeah. in new york uh with all his uh his uh, corporate backing as well as his uh, image and uh, you know but now you have the the drivers coming from all areas of the, of the country uh, martin truex jr for example he's from my home state in new jersey so yeah. uh you know, they're not the traditional Southern boys uh, that that are showing up every every Sunday. Chris Dorado joining us here on the afternoon sports drive. Last thing here for you, Chris. How do you think the the experience was for the fans, kind of for the first time, uh, really anywhere? Um, when, when, with NASCAR returning yesterday, uh, with that uh, opportunity for them, as well as I believe we talked about thirty thousand planning on attending uh, at the race at Bristol. Well, the All Star race will be a very big test. Uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna draw up with the thirty thousand there, and and that'll be uh, I think college football and as well as the NFL should be taking a good look on how that's going to be handled. You know that Bristol Motor Speedway is pretty much like a football stadium for all intents and purposes, and so how they how they operate there uh, in, a, in a facility like that Speedway. They, I think uh, the football folks should be taking a good look at that and, and seeing how that that's handled. You know that that's, that uh, speedway holds upwards of 100,000 under normal circumstances. I've been there when it's been packed, so 30,000 will be uh, you know a bit scattered around. But uh, that will be that will be typical of what might be happening in uh, in college football and the NFL come the fall. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. A lot of eyes will be on that race to see how everything uh, works out as, as well afterwards with, with everyone being there. Chris Dorado joining us here on the Afternoon Sports Drive. Chris, so much, uh, thanks so much for taking some of your time out today. Uh, enjoy Florida. Uh, hopefully uh, everything stays, uh, you know, calms down a little bit over there. Stay safe. 
You as well over there, and uh, make sure you keep my brother in line when you when you see him. Next. Hey, oh, we it, always it's, do. It's sort of an impossible task, but we do our best. <laughs> well, I hope so. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris, thanks. Thanks, guys. All right, Chris Dorado joining us here on the uh, the afternoon sports drive. I love his perspective on on everything NASCAR.